And we are back, and we're talking about the biggest event in wrestling history. But before we get to that, let's take a little bit of time to talk about the man that is right behind you, Mr. Punk. Yes. Uh, so this is the entire story to my knowledge. The reason of the altercation was because Jack Perry wanted to use real glass on the windshield mm -hmm. with his match against Hook. CM Punk nixed the idea and they used sugar glass, which is something that you usually that that's the glass that breaks in right, that's, every bit that's fine. right. That's that's the that's the glass that breaks in production. Right. Like in movie production and stuff. Like that's the right. glass that they use. It's sugar glass. It doesn't it, it shatters the pieces. It doesn't have sharp edges. Like right. it, it like disintegrates. Uh Jack Perry during the match made a comment saying Real glass, my ass. Obviously referring to Punk. We didn't know this at the time. After Now, after CM Punk's match, CM Punk got into Jack Perry's face and said, you got a problem with me. Jack Perry said nothing. And CM Punk pushed Jack Perry. And then they started to fight. It was broken up fairly quickly. But it was backstage, and a lot of people saw it. Yes, a lot of people saw it. And then Punk went after Tony Khan directly and yelled at him away from people. Right. Oh, and CM Punk did say that, I hate this place, I quit. Firing CM Punk was the 100% right thing to do. Yep. In, in this entire situation, be like, well, well why don't, didn't they fire Jack Perry? Jack Perry did not start the physical part of the altercation. He just made an offhanded comment. He made an offhanded comment, and he was pissed off at Punk. That's not anything. I can call Pina Gallery an asshole. You do but, that. No. <laughs> but, but the thing is, is that as soon as I touch him, that's when it becomes a problem. Right. If Punk just left it at that and did not do anything, or maybe talk to him that wouldn't have been a problem mm -hmm. at all and people were like well that's you respect veterans or that's not how they did it back then it, that was back then you don't do that now mm -hmm. it's not how this works anymore there's right. a reason why a uh, wrestler's court died in the early 2000s right that's why i mean you respect your vets yeah that's fine but jack perry didn't should he have i don't, I don't know, know. I don't know why Punk had the power and authority to say no to that spot anyway. Well, isn't he a producer? Or, or he was, I guess, maybe a producer as I well. I don't think so. Oh. I don't think that was actually a thing. I think he just he was just CM Punk, and Tony Khan is a huge CM Punk mark. Oh, that's true. So but Anything that CM Punk says goes, right, yep. in his world. Yep. Anyways, let's get to All In, the, quote, biggest event in wrestling history. There was not 81,000 people in that building. I, 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 unless I can see from Wembley Stadium scanners that 81,000 scans happened, I will not believe it. Because why believe this show, but still question WWE? It's either you question all of it or you question none of it. Right. You don't get to just pick and choose what you have an outrage about right i'm 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 i want to believe wembley stadium results when they actually come out exactly i don't want to believe AEW. AEW is going to inflate the numbers i don't want to believe AEW. uh wrestlenomics is you know there to help out because they're the business side of it and i for the most part i do believe them but given the you know, given the circumstances on what this means, I would like to see the Wembley official statement. Right. But that's just me. Anyways, let's move on. All in. What's going on? All right. Uh, CM Punk Samoa Joe for the real world's champion. Uh, it was a fine match. Mm -hmm. uh, they paced it okay for the most part. And it was a Pepsi plunge, which we haven't seen in many years, for CM Punk to beat Samoa Joe. And despite everything else that happened around it. And we didn't know until after the show. Right, right, right. Um, I am going to give this an Orange Cassidy thumbs up. Mm -hmm. And this is a definite. Like, this is not being really nice or anything. I thought it was a good opener for the oh, yeah. show. Um, also, the, uh, the visual set and the pyro and stuff that they had looked cool. I will give them that. 
All right, uh, Bullet Club Gold taking on uh, uh, Golden Elite with Hangman Page, Omega, and uh, Kota Bushi. <sighs> you have Kenny Omega, and yet you do this. I would have rather had Kenny Omega and Jay White. Yeah. With maybe people at ringside. What? Come on, people. This is really not that challenging. You have such great talent here. Right. You could have done something a lot better than this. <laughs> like, seriously. Right. This, this is thrown together sort of match. Yep. It, it was a fine match, but why? Like, right. I just don't get why this was a thing. But it was a roll-up for uh, Bullet Club Gold and Konosuke to win. That was a very interesting decision, but it is what it is. I'm going to be nice. I'm going to give it an Orange Cassidy thumbs up because they worked hard. Yeah. That's all I can really say. And how I make that majestic, I just told you. Just don't do it. <laughs> so, FTR versus the Young Bucks for the AEW World Tag Team Champions. Of the three matches that we've seen, this one was by far the weakest. Oh, absolutely. Their other, other two matches were really much better. Yep, but once again, you set the bar so high. Right. You have to follow it up, and especially given this, they felt like they just didn't care. Right. Now, did the situation with Cash Wheeler, did that play a role into what they could or could not do? What restrictions were placed on Cash Wheeler right. to be in this country? Keep in mind. His charges are serious. Right. Like, and and he could have, for, for all we know, he could have been given a 24-hour temporary travel visa, which mm -hmm. would mean you have to travel in the same day and then leave right after. So right. we don't know what the situation is. Exactly. So it just it felt very weird. Like mm -hmm. It felt because that, that over-looming arrest was the thing that overshadowed pretty much of this. Yeah, match. and then by this point in time, two people were made aware of an altercation that took stage back place at AEW All-In. And I feel like if you weren't, you know, if you were not in the arena or anything, you probably mm -hmm. would have already known that something happened involving CM Punk. Right. Well, actually, no. I think you said there was an incident, but... Right. It, was, it was an incident. We didn't know the... We did not know what the incident was until after the show right. was done. It took a couple of days for us to figure that out. But but again, this this is over... this The incident with Punk overshadowing everything. It really did. All it is going to be known for that. No, yeah. Nothing about the matches, but... The matches just didn't feel fine, like good. Yeah, it felt like it, it felt like a muggy, weird show. I didn't like this. Anyway. Anyways, moving on. Um, it was Shattered Machine. It was a good match, but I've seen better. I'm gonna give it a full thumbs up because I did enjoy more than I didn't like. Right, and that's really like where it is. Stadium Stampede. This one was weird. I didn't hate this. I actually did like this, but once again. A, a match like this needs a little pizzazz. You gave right. us an incredible one. Uh, the original one. Yeah. The original Stadium Stampede. Because it was so over the top. You right. had people running each other with golf carts. You had... But again, this was during the pandemic era. Yeah, and but... I, I, think, I think the Stadium Stampede should have stayed in the pandemic era. Yeah, it should have. It's just not there. It, uh, it doesn't have the same feel. You're just, you're just now... Now it's just like a false kind of noise qualification. Who cares? Right. With like 10 people in the match or however... Was it eight person or... I don't remember how many people well, were it was, in Well, no, keep in mind, it was supposed to be a... Um, it was supposed to be six on six. It was supposed to be 12. But Ray Phoenix had yeah yeah issues. yeah okay so then it was a, a ten person match yep. it was it, I don't know it was just kind of weird it was weird well, I, because I, because the expectations are in such a different way because right. you had comedy you had wackiness you had a lot more this one was just bleh. this felt like if WWE tried to do Stadium Stampede right. it felt very watered down to what I was expecting now there was blood and pillar and plunder and. They had Trent Beretta's mom's vehicle there, so they had all the fun stuff. They had cookies thrown all over the place. So there was some fun stuff here that I did like, but it just wasn't that over-the-top wackiness right. that I like about say I like Stadium Stampede. It's a cool concept, but you're right. It one of those matches that should have stayed in the realm of the pandemic era. Or or you can do the stadium stampede in a different place and have a live stream that's right. only that's the only way this would work but i don't think people are going to pay hundreds of dollars to see that exactly they're not um it was an orange punch on claudio for the win it was fine it, it was just the worst stadium cmp that i've seen anyway uh hikaru shida dr Britt baker 
Soraya, Tony Storm for the AW Women's World Champion. It was fine. Yeah. Like, what else do you want me to say? They had these random matches where Tony Storm, for no particular ass reason, got a buy. Like, everybody else had to right. compete, including Akari Ushida, the defending champion. Right. But Tony Storm just gets a buy. Why? Because she's had- a former champion? I don't fucking know. But the, but the actual champion had to wrestle. Right. <laughs> Not only that, but she had to defend the champion right. before the match. <laughs> it was so dumb. It's, this thrown together random ass match. If you're going to do it, once again, here's, here's how you make this majestic again. It's so freaking easy. Either have the deception thing because you have two members of the outcasts in this match. And that's sort of where it broke apart. Where they have valid reasons to go for the belt and don't have Dr. Britt Baker there. Why does she have to be in this match? She wasn't even the one that got pinned. Right. She was just there. Right. Um, Soraya coming out with her family was cool. I yeah. like that. You know that she. It was a feel good moment for Soraya. And yeah. that's fine. But that's all. That's all it was. It was. It was nightcap for Soraya to win. Obviously, they are in England. People lost their minds, and obviously, uh, winning this championship in front of her family, her literal ass family. It, I thought that was cool. It was right. a cute all thing. Right. Well, yeah. There we um, go. It, it gets an Orange Cassidy thumbs up, and that's being nice. So yes, a very mediocre show. It really is. Uh, Christian Cage and Swerve Strickland taking oh, on Darby Allin. Uh, what coffin is coffin match? What is this match? It's coffin know. match. I know, but um, I did like Darby Allin scene coming out to a Metallica song. That was cool. And but other than that, uh, what I've heard from Darby Allin um, after that makes me really say it was a man. And guess what? It makes it worse because now Darby Allin is having literal spinal issues. Right. Like. <sighs> Why? Or this is, is this is what happens. Does this, this, uh, this this is it. <laughs> does, is this guy trying to get into a wheelchair? Right. Like seriously. Uh Sting is old. Christian bless his heart tried his best. Swerve Strickland was like the only good thing about this match because Swerve is very good. And Darby Darby says a crass test dummy. I don't understand the appeal. I don't understand it either. Like I don't get I, I've never gotten it. But anyways. Anyway, it was a coffin drop for the win. Uh, uh, thumbs down. Actually, you know what? Thumbs down, fuck you. Yeah, seriously. This is awful. It wasn't awful. It wasn't two thumbs down, and I'm being really nice there, too. Uh, Chris Jericho and Will Ospreay. It was a fun match. hmm But. But why? Right. <laughs> now, we had, like, the Don Callis thing, but Will Ospreay's not part of the Don Callis family. And right. So, is Don Callis in two different rivalries? I mean, I feel, I feel like this was a Don Callis, Chris Jericho problem. I think that someone within the family should have been a part of this. Konosuke Takeshka. Right. If you want Konosuke in the match, have it be Konosuke Takeshka. But again, Will Ospreay, all the appeal because he's from New Japan and everyone loves it. He's also from England. Yeah. So, he has all the appeal. Here's what. Here's a better idea. I mean, this, this shit is really not all that hard. Chris Jericho, Kanosuke. Uh, Will Ospreay, Kenny Omega for the weird European champion. Right. Hello? It takes me two seconds to yeah. figure that out. I know. I'm pretty sure ChatGPT could book something better, too. But <laughs> um, Chris Jericho's entrance was kind of cool, though, because he sang his own theme song to the ring. This is so um, I did not like I did not like the Prince thing because that was annoying. It's like, yeah, you're in Wembley, and you have to be Prince if you're singing there. Yeah, Chris Jericho, you ain't Prince, honey. Sorry. Hate to tell you. <laughs> um, it was a stormbreaker for Will Ospreay to win. I'm going to give it. I'm going to give it a full thumbs up, mm-hmm. and this is also being very nice um, on that. So there you go. All right, here we are. Six person tag. Six person tag. House of Black versus the acclaimed. House of Black doing their uh, tribute to Bray. Pretty good. I liked it. I liked it. I liked their gear. The mm. white and gold looked really, really cool. Um, and yeah, it it was it was fine. It was a nice pee break match before the main because this was penultimate. Yep. And it was the mic drop for um, uh, the acclaimed to win the titles. They made them pink. Where you can scissor with the titles. So once again, you take it off of a good team that has great chemistry and we're making these championships mean something and put them on a bunch of jokes whose whose most popular days are far behind. Yep. Them. 
No one cares. Exactly. If you were going to do this, have them beat them the first time around. Right. Why wait? doesn't make sense. I don't know. It's stupid. Anyways. Um, Main event. Adam Cole, MJF for the AW World Champion. I really like this match. It was fine. It's just I don't get this rivalry or whatever you call. It. I don't. I don't get it. Although this one was the most developed out of all the matches. So here's here's. It's just it's kind of getting stale for me. Already? It's already really getting stale. Already? Yeah. Yeah. That's funny uh, because it was a, it, it was the best thing on AEW. So yeah. Here's here was the thing. They won the. Ring of Honor Tag Team Champions. So they're going the in. Pre-show. Right, they're going in as the Ring of Honor Tag Team Champions. And, and here's why I don't mind this because Adam Cole's pursuit of this title was based out of the rivalry in the first place. Right. And they were forced to team up and realize that they have a lot more in common. I like that. I thought it was actually a cool little thing. And actually. There was a lot of really good stuff here. I liked a lot of what was constructed where there was a conflict with Roderick Strong. There was there was a- see that one has more appeal to me than anything. See, I want to see Oh, we're going to I mean that's going to happen. Right. That, that whole thing is going to happen and especially because the Kingdom are there. The Kingdom want to go for the Ring of Honor Tag Team Champions. You already have it there. Cool. Right. Great. I love it. And then maybe have Roger Strong win the Ring of Honor World Champion, or Adam Cole win the Ring of Honor World Champion, and then he can face Roger Strong for it. Right. That would there's be- a there's a lot of possibilities, but again, it's just okay. Now let's see this evolve because now I'm just like, if this keeps going and spinning its wheels at the pace that it's doing, it's just nah. It's not there for me. I mean, it was it was the best match of the entire show by far. Yep. Um, the ending absolutely sucked. It was an inside cradle out of nowhere for MJF to win. Are we joking? Are we really doing that? Yeah. Like, their first match had a time limit draw. I feel like it should have been, like, weird shenanigans where both of them pinned each other. Right. That would have been better than this. But there we have it. And there you go. That was all in. Um, I'm going to give this match a full thumbs up. It was close on being a two full thumbs up. Or a two thumbs up. It was close. Um, and I'm going to give the show overall an Orange Cassidy thumbs up. Yeah, it was very, it was very just, close it was to a full. Fine. Yep, it was there. Anyways, it did it did not meet the expectations. Yes, it did not. So when we come back, we're talking about payback.